Last week, I used Usain Bolt as an example of an athlete who has incredible hip range of motion. This hip extension is the reason he's so fast. All top athletes, if their sport involves running or jumping, have this ability. And the better their performance, the better their hip extension. And so this week, I'm going to teach you how to radically improve your hip extension through unconventional but highly effective means. But there are some common misperceptions about what this skill actually is and how you actually acquire it. Strength training, like lifting weights, is a common approach, but it's actually a rather inelegant solution. All it does is improve your strength through whatever range of motion you already have and whatever pattern of muscle activation you already have. If these weren't that ideal to begin with, if they weren't very good patterns, getting stronger is not going to help you. It's just going to make you better at what you already do. We need to fundamentally change our base. And this is improving our pattern of muscle activation and improving our range of motion. These are the things that scale well. This is one of the things I personally did when dramatically improving my performance. The ability to get hip extension is fundamental for so many skills. But before we get into how to get it, let's have a quick refresher on what it actually is. So firstly, we need to start with a neutral hip position, which if you can think about our hips, just like a cup, if they tilt forward, the torso gets poured out. If they tilt back, the torso pours the other way. We want them to hold the torso neatly inside of it. When we have that neutral hip position, we're gonna draw a flat line across it, indicating that they're at neutral position. And then relative to this flat line, we're gonna draw a right angle line down through the leg. As it goes down directly through the leg, we can think of this leg as a neutral position. It's at zero degrees. If the leg goes in front of this line, it's coming into hip flexion, which means it's a short angle in front of the leg. And if it goes back, the leg is in hip extension. So that's hip extension. If the hip orientation changes, so does this intersecting line. They're connected. It's always at a right angle to each other. And if that happens, it means the leg has to go back even further to be an actual hip extension. And the leg can be resting on the ground in hip flexion, which is what happens for most people. Okay, so if you don't already have hip extension, and trust me, you don't, how do you go about getting it? Stretch. Uh, five hours a day might be enough if you could manage it. But even then, that's not teaching you how to apply that range and how to make it functional in your movements. Do glute exercises, but remember power and functional range are not the same things. Getting thick is gonna make you more powerful through whatever range you already have. But if that's not a very big range, that's not gonna help you get any more hip extension. What we need is something that is functionally equivalent to the skill we're trying to learn. It would be great if we could just do this straight away in running, but running is really fast. It's super hard to learn a new skill when you have to do it really, really quickly. Fortunately, such a skill exists, it's walking. Hip extension is hip extension. It doesn't matter how fast you're going. Walking is one of the most important and surprisingly challenging skills you'll ever learn in your entire life. It's slow enough to be actually manageable in terms of learning the skill without being overwhelmed by the speed of trying to run or do something at the same time. And it actually provides you with an opportunity to actively challenge and stretch that limited range of motion you have. Every step is an opportunity to open up those hip flexors on the front and strengthen the glutes on the back. Basically everything we need to do. And if you lead an active lifestyle, that five hours a day I talked about before might actually be possible. Okay, cool, sounds interesting, but how do I know if I'm doing it right? I'm gonna give you four examples to make it super clear what we're looking for. One, if in doubt, copy the best athletes in the world. I wish they walked parallel to the camera more, but anyway. These are some of the best triple jumpers in the world and they get unbelievably good hip extension. Relative to that neutral vertical line, the leg is coming back into wonderful extension. Um, here's me demonstrating this from a slightly better angle. You can see here that my hip line is staying flat throughout the entirety of the step and the leg is coming back in a nice even straight line relative to that with all the hip extension muscles working the butt, the quads and the calf. It's also worth noting that pros don't always walk well in spite of the fact that they're physically capable of doing so but that's a topic for another video. Anyway, example number two. Is this guy getting hip extension? Now, without the lines on, this can be really hard to see. So I'm gonna pause and draw the lines on and it can be a little more obvious now. When we look at this shape, this does not look like hip extension. Even though the leg has traveled back a long way in space, the hips are very tilted forward. And that's because he's got a very tight hip flexor muscle. Remember that pesky hip flexor muscle we talked about last video that goes from the front of the leg to the front of the spine? This is very tight on this guy and it's curving his spine. And as his spine is pulled by that tight hip flexor muscle, his hips are tilting forward. And as his hips tilt forward, it means that his leg can't really go back because legs coming back, it's about the relative angle from hip to leg. Example number three is this guy getting hip extension. If we slow it down and put the lines on, again, we can see, no, unfortunately he's not, but for a slightly different reason. Unfortunately, we have two hip flexor muscles. This one goes from the front of the leg to the front of the hip, and it has a similar effect to the first hip flexor muscle in that it stops you getting good hip extension, but the curvature of the hips is different. It's more of a sharper, shorter, kink down in the angle rather than curving through the whole spine. And as a result, the spine has less curvature. Okay, now how about this clip? 
And this isn't as obvious as the previous ones because what's happening here is a little bit counterintuitive. What's happening is that as the hip gets to the end of the step, it's twisting back. And it's twisting because the spine is rotating. Because the spine and the hips are connected by bone, as you twist through the spine, you can twist through the hip. And as that hip twists back, it means that you don't actually get into hip extension. You get the leg coming back and the illusion of a long step, but it's not really a long step. It's created by rotation at the hip and spine and not by actual hip extension. Now, last example, this was me after four years of training parkour. I had terrible, terrible hip extension. I hope you can see that by now. I'm completely stuck in flexion all the time. I'm not getting anywhere near leaving this. And this translated directly through to my jumping ability, which you can see here. My inability to get out of this position in my daily life meant that there's no way I could do it in more complex things like jumping or running or whatever. But this also illustrates really well another problem we're gonna run into pretty quickly and that people's real life movement patterns are more complex than the simplified examples we're presenting here. People are gonna do a lot of weird stuff. Maybe they're gonna have one hip flexor muscle tighter on one side than the other. One hip is gonna turn back more than the other. They're gonna have way more weight on one leg than the other. And all of these are gonna make it more complex to analyze and understand what it is you're looking at if you try and film yourself. Fortunately, what we're looking for, the ideal is very simple. Stable hips and hip extension. And there are two last quick tips that are really gonna help you get this down. First, center of gravity needs to be forward. Most people's walking pattern has their kind of weight of their torso sitting too far back in space. What usually goes with that is most people's gait pattern is that their leg is just lifting in front of them. Most of their locomotion is happening because the leg lifts in front. And what do we know about that? That's hip flexion. That's not what we're trying to practice here. If we get our center of gravity further in space, this gives an opportunity for, instead of our gait pattern being dominated by leg lifting, we can have our gait much more hip extension driven. So our leg coming behind us in our step. And our leg cannot come behind us like this if our center of gravity is sitting back. And second, your center of gravity needs to be relatively central. If you're constantly bending to the left or the right with a very unstable spine, it's gonna make it really hard to do this well, especially when it comes to controlling the rotations of your hips. But don't worry too much about that for now. Finally, there are three ways to know if we're getting this right or not. And I said before that walking is complicated, and I'm sure if you try and do this, you'll find out immediately what I mean by this. It's really hard to know if we're doing the right thing. The first big clue to know that you're heading in the right direction is what you feel on the front of your legs. You should feel a tightness on the front of your hip at the end of each step, right here. This indicates that you are stretching those hip flexors in every step. And that's really what we want to be getting to that point where we're challenging their range of motion. You don't want to push so hard that you feel like it's going to tear off. That will tear your hip flexor, but you want to feel that you're at the limit of their range of motion in every step. Two, you want to feel your leg extension muscles working in your step. So you want to feel at the end of the step, the active contraction of your calf, your quad, and your bum as your leg straightens behind you. And they have a tangible felt sensation of contraction in those muscles. It's not that you want to just arbitrarily squeeze them, but you want to feel them having the action of pushing you forward in space. As your center of gravity comes forward, they push behind you. And lastly, film yourself. Have a look at what you look like moving. Take the camera out and just film yourself walking normally from the side, film yourself doing some jumps or whatever sport it is you're doing and have a look at how much hip extension you're getting. This is the best way to understand and learn to analyze our own movement because we've got to learn to understand these skills for ourselves. Look, this whole learning to walk thing, is a, it's a process. It's not an event. This is not something that you're gonna dramatically get in one day. It's something that you need to work on. You need to challenge that tightness and build up the skills and understand how your own body is working because ultimately the only person who's in control and is able to make these changes in their body is you. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Peace out.